What's up, everybody? Welcome to our first cooking with Chef Bubba. Uh, it's me and Amada here doing our commentary. And uh, first, I would like to introduce Chef Bubba. Bubba, how you doing? Hey, what's going on? I'm doing pretty good. How are you guys doing? Not too bad. Amada, how are you doing? I'm doing good. Thanks for asking, guys. I hope this will be a good idea to get some dinner rolling in our house, too, because I hope I have the ingredients, I think, for some spaghetti. So it should be good. <laughs> I'm excited to see what you uh, what you got cooking for us, Bubba. So it's all you. Right on. So today I'm going to be preparing some uh, spaghetti for dinner. Uh, it's a pretty easy recipe. Uh, the beauty of this recipe, too, is it's very versatile. By that, I mean, if you don't like any, some of the stuff that I have, you can always switch in, take out, add whatever you like to make it your own. Everybody's kind of got their own spaghetti recipe. This is just one way that I know how to do it. Um, so I'm going to start by turning the water to boiling. Put a little bit of salt. Just a little bit. And around this kitchen, I don't use too many measurements unless I'm baking. And that's like a science. Put a little bit of a olive oil, just a couple drops. That's gonna rise to the top. I, sh I don't exactly know the science behind that. That's just what I was taught when I first learned how to make spaghetti. So while that water's getting going, I'm gonna start on the sauce. So I've already prepped a little bit of the mushrooms and some of the celery. I'm gonna do some garlic and onion right now. So what I'm gonna show you is how to cut an onion, dice an onion real small. I put one slice through the middle, and kiddos, if you're using a knife, be sure you got your parents around for to help you, because this can be dangerous if you don't know what you're doing. So I make some small slices here. Boom, 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 boom. One more on the end. Turn it, and then one more cut, and these are going to be some nice, small, diced onions. When I get to the end there, just chop like this. Maybe go over one more time for good measure. Make sure, because if you don't like onions, getting a big piece of onion might not be the best, but it provides a nice, good flavor. So now I've got about five or six cloves of garlic here. If you want more, add more. If you don't like garlic so much, don't add as much. So what I do to break up the garlic is I take my knife and I push down. And that kind of breaks that outside peel. And it's all right that it's kind of mashed up like that because we're going to chop it up real fine anyways. Boom. So I've got to get the skins off. If you leave the skins on, it's not going to be very tasty because no matter how much you cook it, it's never going to get soft. <laughs> so. And uh, Bubba, while you're doing this, uh, I'm going to ask you a few questions. Uh, First one, what uh, why do you think cooking is important? Uh, cooking at home is important. I think it's important to know how to cook because you gotta you gotta eat to survive, you know. And a lot of people, you know, I'm, I'm a male especially too, and so not every male knows how to cook. But I think that it's a good skill to have to at least have a a few recipes under your belt because if you if you were raised in a home with a badass mama or grandma or auntie that can cook up real good. You know, you're gonna have you're gonna find yourself at a time when you need to do it on your own, or you might find yourself at a time where you want to impress a lady. <laughs> and having your recipes under your belt might just help with that. But it's good to, me under the bus. Uh, it's good to have uh, it's good to be able to sustain yourself though, you know, and because like I said, you gotta eat every day, and so you can't eat fast food all the time. So now I'm gonna chop up the garlic here. And I'm just doing it long ways first, kind of get some strips like that, I guess you'd call them. And then I turn it, turn it the other way. And how big of a um, serving size are you guys making for you guys or a little bit more? So when I make my sauce for spaghetti, I always make a little bit more. I always do um do a good sized pot of sauce but the beauty of spaghetti sauce is it freezes really well so uh if you uh make too much 
you can always put it in the freezer and then the next time you make spaghetti, all you gotta do is cook the noodles. Okay. I usually make more too. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I always, uh, I was raised with, it's better to have a little bit too much and not have enough. Mm -hmm. Cause you never know who's gonna wanna stop by for dinner. <laughs> oh. Just warning you, I'll be on my way soon. <laughs> So I just kind of mix the garlic and onions together. So now I have all of my veggies are prepped up. I got my garlic and onions. I got my celery and I got my mushrooms. We like mushrooms in this household. So I did about 12 to 15 of the uh, mini mushrooms from the store. You can use any mushroom you like. If it's fall time and you got some tan oats, ooh, those are pretty good in there. So what I'm gonna do is turn the stove on to about seven. It's important, you don't want to cook everything on high. When you're a novice uh, chef, myself included in my early cooking days, you tend to want to get everything done quick. Well, that, that, that usually doesn't cook just right. So <laughs> I'm gonna put this at about seven. Cause I want it kind of high cause I'm cooking some meat, but not so high that I burn the meat. So as some hamburger, about a pound to a pound and a half. And if you're feeding a, a lot of people, you can always add more. And so this is going to start to fry up. I'll grab my spatula here and kind of mix it around a little bit, kind of break it down. As it cooks, it's gonna break down a little bit. It's good to add a little, there's some fat in the hamburger, but I might add a little bit of olive oil here just to kind of help it along. And during this stage is when we want to season. So when you season your food, you kind of want to build upon itself, right? You let this let the flavors build upon themselves. So I'll add a little bit of pepper, black pepper, a little bit of my salt here. Not too much, just enough. I like a little paprika and a little cumin. Not like I said, not too much, just enough. A few little shakes, kind of give it some flavor here. It's gonna give it like a nice full, like almost smoky flavor to the meat. So mix that around a little bit more. You can see it's starting to brown up just a little bit, but that's gonna take a little bit of time. Well, while we're waiting for the, the meat to brown up, I got a couple more questions for you. Uh... What do you think the importance of uh, not only learning how to uh, cook, but teaching other people how to cook? Do you think, uh, how do you think that, that goes? And like, what do you think the importance of that, of that is? Cooking is definitely a very bonding activity. So when we learn how to, how to, uh, how to cook, it's always fun to share that with our family, whether it's a, a parent or an aunt or uncle sharing with the, the child, or even you know, if it's the other way around, if the child, if you're, if you're able to share with your folks or your your grandparent uh, a recipe that you uh, learn, it's nice because uh, you get a good feeling when you when you cook for people. You know, it's, it's one thing to cook for yourself, but when you cook for other people and you and you see them satisfied and enjoying your meal, that that gives you a good sense of uh, the purpose. And then what do you have to say to people who are too scared to cook for others? Like, or think they're going to mess up or think they're not going to cook right. What do you have to say for them? If you're afraid of doing something wrong, uh, the best is to always follow a recipe then. Uh, you know, I don't like to use a whole lot of recipes, uh, but if you are afraid of messing something up, go ahead. The internet has it's got lots and lots of different kinds of recipes for basically anything you'd want to cook. And if it's so long as you follow a recipe, it won't be bad. It is browned up now. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the meat out and put it into this bowl here. I want to try to leave as much as the uh, 
oil in there as I can because we're going to use that to help saute the vegetables. I do now is I'm going to add my mushrooms first because they take a little bit longer to break down. So add the mushrooms. I'm going to add just a splash of all the oil because those mushrooms, they really soak up a lot and they soak up a lot of flavor. I might do a little bit of salt along the way here just enough to kind of like i said those mushrooms are going to soak that up let those go what is the importance of like having vegetables adding vegetables into uh your food instead of just having just meat and, or just uh sauce spaghetti is is a great dish that you can add some some vegetables in uh especially for the younger kids that, that aren't really fond of it they get all the vegetables added together for the and build the flavor of the sauce and so it's a good way to to mix some nutrients in with your protein and your uh carbohydrates that come from the noodles the protein from the meat it's nice to have a well-balanced meal What do you have to say to the people who are just like, oh, I don't like mushrooms, or I don't like celery, or, I don't like this, I don't like that. What do you have to say to them? I think that's the beauty of spaghetti is that it, it, there's definitely more than one recipe for spaghetti. So you can add, you don't have to use the mushrooms, you don't have to use the uh, celery, the onions and the garlic, really, I would suggest keeping those, but if you're really against them, you can go without them. Bubba, what what does food sovereignty mean to you in the sense of like, um, I know you talked about aunties cooking and stuff like that, but did any of them always use any other like canning recipes or and you were saying tan oak mushrooms, if you have those, like gathering, has that been connected to you guys and your family? I always like to use as much ingredients as I can gather or make on my own. Uh, in the summertime, when the tomatoes are ripe, I'll go to the farmer's market and buy great big flats of uh, tomatoes. And I will can the tomatoes. I don't have any with me right now. I've used them all up now because uh, we're into spring, but it, they got me through the winter anyways. Um, and if you have your own jar of tomatoes, you don't need the sauce that comes in a can. You can just add that with a little bit of tomato paste and that'll make your own sauce. Um, I think it, for me and my life, I like to eat as much as I can, as I possibly can from what I gather and what I make on my own. I think that that adds a, a certain level of ownership a uh, certain level of agency when you add when you're making these kinds of foods um because you you can feel that much better like oh man i made that spaghetti from the tomatoes that i grew and canned or uh you know if you can grow onions in your house at your house you know just whatever you can it just it it adds that sense of ownership and pride to your food so these mushrooms are just about sauteed all we wanted to do is cook a little bit of the water out of them. So now I'll add the celery next. Same thing, we want to just cook a little bit of the water out and kind of blend the flavor of the celery and the mushroom. The celery don't take too long. Give that a stir. Now I'm going to add the garlic and the onions here. So I'm gonna mix all of this around. And while this is going, it's gonna saute for just a few minutes. 
which is just long enough to come over here to get these or my tomato sauce opened up. So for my recipe, I'm doing three cans of tomato sauce and one can of tomato paste here. And this tomato paste is gonna work to uh, thicken your sauce up and make it, give it some more consistency. What I'm gonna do next is put a little bit of this Italian seasoning. If you have fresh rosemary, fresh thyme, um, or even just dried thyme and rosemary on their own, they go great. I think this blend also has some oregano and some sage, a little bit of basil in here. This is only, I think, $2.99 at Grocery Outlet. Like I said, this is a very affordable meal. The cans were only about 75 cents or a dollar each. The hamburger was a few bucks for a few pounds of that. You know, this is I'm balling on a budget here. This is a great meal for a, for a low cost. So I'm going to add a little bit of the uh, Italian uh, herbs here to this while the all the onions and the mushrooms are all cooking together. Let all the flavors blend together here. I'm getting hungry myself watching now. <laughs> I was gonna say the same thing. I'm getting, I'm starving. I'm waiting for him to send this to me right after, as soon as it gets done. <laughs> now I'm gonna go ahead and add the hamburger back, juices and all. Make sure I get all of it so I'm not wasting too much here. Mix it all together. It's important, like I said earlier, it's important for all of these sauces to blend. All of these flavors to blend. Into that's what makes the brings it all together in a sauce. All right, let this go for just a second longer here, kind of marinate together. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna dump the sauce. One. Two and three. While you're doing that, I got a question for you. Uh, has there ever been anything that you put in your uh, spaghetti that you were like, "Oh, maybe, maybe I shouldn't try this, or maybe I might not want to put that in next time"? Is there anything like that you've been mm -hmm. experimenting with? I don't think there's anything I haven't particularly liked. Maybe just over seasoning. If you if you over season, that's almost as bad as under seasoning because then it's a a whole lot in your in your face at one time. So it, I blended all the sauce together. Now I'm going to add a little bit of the paste here. One one can, one small can of tomato paste. And the tomato paste provides the consistency you're saying? Yep. The tomato paste makes it nice and thick. I mean, it's all, you know, it's the same thing as tomato sauce. It's just more condensed. Mix it together. The tomato paste takes a little bit of a second, but as it as it cooks down, it'll it'll all come together here. So let's see, here we are. So now I'm gonna add a little bit more of the uh seasoning smidge more of the italian i'm gonna put a bay leaf in there and it's, you don't want to break up the bay leaf because it doesn't really get soft and edible so you just want to put it in there and let it let it uh mix together and then you can take it out once the sauce is ready and the last thing i'm going to add is just a little scoop of chili peppers here. These are dried red chilies. Um, you don't want to do too much unless you really like your spaghetti spicy, but just a little bit adds some like texture to your sauce. I guess you could say, you know, adds a little bit of depth of flavor. 
So you mix this all around together some more. And then I'm going to turn the heat down to about four, three or four, and just kind of let this uh, simmer together for a little while. And by now, the water is just about boiling. So I'm going to go ahead, open my box of spaghetti here. I think $1.99 at the store. It's two of us, so maybe about a half a box is good. We like spaghetti. If you make too much, nothing better, no kind of better leftovers than spaghetti and a fried egg in the morning. Maybe a little bit more here. We like spaghetti. We like spaghetti and eggs more like. So let that, and it's important to, um, use kind of a bigger pot for this because you want the spaghetti to lay down and all cook evenly in the water so you want to make sure that you have enough water here to uh cover it all the way up that way it all cooks kind of evenly and then kind of mix it around and then let it come back to a boil and then this box says that it is ready al dente in 10 minutes and if you don't know what al dente means that it's like a type of cooking style for pasta where the pasta is just a little bit um, firm still. I and mean, it's got a little bit of a bite to it. Some people, you know, that's all personal preference. Uh, how long you like to cook your spaghetti for. If you like your noodles really soft, if you like them a little bit more on the firm side. So it's gonna take a few minutes. So if there's any questions, now a good time. Uh, I'd like to talk more about like the food sovereignty and how, uh, especially up here, like, what do you think, how do you think we can best help everybody who needs food or who is struggling with uh, not having food? How do you think we can best help them to to get the food that they need or to even get the recipes out if they're trying to learn how to cook or just get the awareness out. I think now more than ever during this time of COVID, it's important that we take care of each other. So this is this is one recipe that is great and can be shared. You know, if you have we can't we can't visit with our with our loved ones, but you know, maybe you could make a nice big pot of spaghetti like this and then Take a little bit over to your family. It's important that um, you know part of food sovereignty is a responsibility not only to yourself but a responsibility to your community. You know, and um, tying it back to like our traditional ways, even though we're cooking a modern recipe of spaghetti here. You know, when a person would go out and uh, hunt or fish or go eeling or gather this or gather that, it was you know it was shared with the community. So this is one way, you know, there's not too many uh, native gatherings that don't have spaghetti, you know, it's, it's a really uh, easy way to feed a good amount of people too, or at least as a side dish, if it's not the main, main course of the meal. Have you heard of uh, the master food preservers or any of that sense with like the Potawat Food Garden in the sense of like uh, food sustainability? Yeah, I've heard of Master Food Preservers. Um, I've actually helped with a lot of uh, different kind of canning workshops. I'm not a um, MFP myself, um, but it that's a big part of food sovereignty is um, food preservation. Uh, and so there are definitely recipes where you can can. I mentioned canning the tomatoes. You can can the tomato sauce um, if provided that you follow a recipe that's approved um, for canning. Uh, a lot of this, a lot of, almost everything here can, can be used. All of the ingredients here um, can be canned or, you know, can be gathered locally aside from the uh, spaghetti. In fact, the hamburger that I'm using is um, hamburger that I made from deer meat too. Uh, you know, that's one example of, how I'm using the food that's around me, uh, you know, in traditional foods to, to, in a modern context. 
sweet. I um, became aware of like the master food preservers interning for the garden at Pottawa. And then I went and actually became an MFP last year. And so I'm trying to learn how to, it scares me with all of the recipes and making sure everything's adequate and the canning sure. stuff. But <laughs> I'm starting to try to do um, jams and jellies. I'm going to start there and work my way up like the garden does. <laughs> yeah, when you, when you, like you mentioned, Amada, when you can food for, for preservation so that they can be stored, uh, it's very, very important that you follow the recipes because uh, they have that down to a science of how, you know, the recipe is in re relation to like the canning process. Uh, the canning process is, uh, it kills all of the germs so that you can pull out a can of this or that and use it, you know, so that way when it's sitting in your cupboard, you're not, um, it's not going bad, right? Um, and so the, the timing of how long you can stuff um, and the temperature, you know, that you do it on, the level that you do it on on your stove is all very important because that's a, it's a matter of, um, of food safety. You know, it's a matter of getting that, that heat all the way through the jar for whatever, whatever kind of uh, food that it is that you're preserving. Uh, if you want to learn more about canning, um, Megan Baldy uh, runs Cooking Healthy in Indian Country, is a page on Facebook, also on YouTube. I highly suggest checking her out. She does a lot of uh, traditional foods um, and preparation and, and a lot of uh, canning recipes. And we're going to have a link to that um, in the description. Say hi to Megan for us. Hi, Megan. Um, the, the next question I have is for, uh, what, what can you tell people who have never really cooked before and want to know more about how to provide for their families in this way? I say that there's no better time than now to learn how to cook, um, and to learn more about cooking. Um, the internet is a great resource for, you know, a multitude of information regarding cooking. It, it's very important to, to kind of learn the, um, you know, the properties of behind what you're doing. Like I mentioned, the flavors building, you know, um, that's something that I learned um, in my time. I actually took a, a foods class when I was a, a senior in high school. And so that really kind of laid the foundation for me. Um, and another show that I learned a lot from is uh, Alton Brown's Good Eats on Food Network. You can look up episodes online. Um, he's kind of uh, eccentric, but he he breaks down the science behind cooking. So if you really want to learn, dive into, you know, the chemical reactions and everything that's going on while you're cooking and take that deeper look at, at this being more than just food, but, you know, this could actually be like a science project. It's just a science project that you eat. Those sound like the best kind of science projects to me. <laughs> um, uh, anybody on our YouTube channel or anybody watching this, do you guys have any uh, other suggestions that you guys want us to learn about or anything else like that? Please let us know. Uh, let us know on our Facebook or on our Instagram, anything like that. And uh, the more information we have on cooking, the the better we'll be able to cook and who knows, maybe I'll be able to cook something besides pancakes in a minute. <laughs> Our boss has been going for uh, about eight, nine, ten minutes or something. So I'm going to try it out here. This is always the best way to uh, know if it's ready is just to try it out. So I kind of let it hang for a second, let it cool down, blow on it. Mmm, I think those noodles are just about ready. Turn my heat on. Reach up here, grab my oven mitt. Very important. Don't want to burn our hands in the process. So I'm going to take this pot over to the sink where I already have a colander. And I'm going to pour all this water. Right in. There's also certain kind of pasta recipes that 
use pasta water for the uh for the sauce so if you really get into cooking and want to learn more about some of the alfredos and different kinds of pastas uh maybe you might want to save that pasta water because it's got all kinds of nice starches that come from these noodles so i'm going to take this back over pour it in here and i'm going to grab a spoon so i'm going to plate some pasta here first before i add the uh sauce to the pot this is just a fancy way to kind of do things here and then take my ladle and get a nice amount of sauce i like some good sauce on there and then i've got some parmesan here just for a little extra pizzazz this is not needed but Definitely a welcome addition. Put some of that on there and got ourselves a nice plate of spaghetti. Have a salad on the side and maybe some garlic bread and you've got yourself a real good meal. Nice job, Bubba. <laughs> good job, Bubba. That looks uh, looks Instagramable, so we'll have to put that on our Instagram too. <laughs> maybe take a shot of the stuff too. We could feature at the end of the video. <laughs> Okay. okay, well, I'm definitely going to have them uh, take a picture of it and then send it to us so I can put it on Instagram. So that's perfect. Okay. All right. Sweet. Um, <laughs> edit that out. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's see. I think we have like 10 minutes before we have to like, before the, the what the call thing is done. So we can ask any other questions that we have for him until... The Zoom meeting's over, I guess. Or if uh, Bubba, you everything you want to message you that you want to say to anybody, or I think some final thoughts would be just to uh, take the time to learn how to cook. Um, you know, it's really. Wait, hold on. Let me ask. Let me ask that question, then you can answer it again. Hold on. Okay. Um. So Bubba, after you. Oh wait, no, I fucked it up. Hold on. Take two. We're not doing this again. <laughs> So, oh, Bubba, any final thoughts after uh, cooking this great meal that you're not going to send me? I think that it, now is the perfect time to learn how to cook. You know, this is a recipe that just about anybody can do. Uh, I mentioned that, you know, if you're a younger, younger kid, oh, make sure you have some help from your parents. But this could be a great bonding time during this time of uh, shelter in place. Why not come together with over some good food? Maybe watch, put a movie on and have a family night out of it. Sounds Hope like a lot of fun, actually. Learn how to make some spaghetti. Thank you. Thanks, everybody, for watching our first video. Uh, Bubble might be back if you guys uh, like it enough. He'll have something else for you guys to cook. Uh, you think you could cook more stuff for us, Bubba? I think I could do that. All I'm right, welcome well, to the comments, too, and... and suggestions of what kind of recipes i can make for the next time we come together exactly if you guys want bubba to cook anything else please let us know if you want uh me and Amada to try and join in good luck but we might uh or if you guys want to show us what you've been cooking please let us know uh, and we'll see you guys next week um later guys <laughs>